Even in a Muslim community, is it possible our iman goes down? Is it possible that we don't feel as close to Allah in one generation after the next after the next, that we're becoming further and further away from Allah? Is it possible we're becoming more materialistic, more ghafil of Allah, that we don't cry in salat anymore, that we don't feel like we feel like reciting Quran much anymore, our du'as have become empty, we just recite some words and say them, we don't even know what they mean, and we don't even care? Does, is that possible? Is that problem possible? When the community, when a Muslim community has that problem, how can they fix it again? How can they get back on track? These are the ayat. These are the ayat. Which means these ayat will be relevant for you and me. Not just as a nation, even as a person. Think, forget about the entire country. Forget about the entire ummah. Just think about yourself. Aren't there days where you have become so far from Allah that you need to get back and you don't even know how? Where do you begin? I feel so distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been so long since I cried in a salah. It's been so long since I felt a connection with him. How do I feel that connection? So many people ask that question. It is in these ayat that the answer lies. Step one, yatlu alayhim ayatihi. That he recites onto them what? His ayat. We have to engage the word of Allah. We have to recite the word of Allah. We have to stop and think about the word of Allah. We have to think about the fact that every time Allah is speaking, He's talking to me. He's talking to me directly. Wallahi, the greatest gift you will ever, ever have in your life is the gift of Allah's speech. Allah chose to speak to you. Allah chose to speak to me in this book. No other religion gives you this kind of direct access to Allah. That Allah is talking to you and me. But some people say, no, no, no. But Allah is only talking to the Prophet wasallam. He's not talking to me. This is not a book for me. This is a book for the ulama, for the scholars. This is just, I just recited with tajweed, but I'm not supposed to think about it. Fihi dhikrukum Allah says. In it, Allah is talking about you. That's literally what He says. In it is your mention. It's about you. First thing you engage this book. First thing we have to do in every Muslim community in the world, and we have to do it constantly, is revive this sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is that sunnah? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. Now you tell me. There are millions of us all over the world, in billions even. We get together in Ramadan and we stand and we listen to the Qur'an being recited. But the vast majority of us, the vast majority of us have no idea what just happened. No clue. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But I do say, I, I will blame you if you don't care. It is not your fault that you don't know. That's not your fault. Allah gave this messenger, this messenger in a nation that was what? Ummiyin. Being ummi, not knowing the words, not knowing how to read and write is not their fault. That is not their fault. But if a messenger has come to you and he's giving you the ayat, and he's reciting them onto you, and you don't even care to understand, then it's your fault. These are people Allah describes in the Qur'an who listen to the word of Allah, لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمَّا وَعُمْيَانًا They don't fall on these ayat deaf and blind. We in 2014 have to create an entire movement all over the world that within the next 10 years, there will be no Muslim teenager that does not know the meanings of the Qur'an. There will be no 15, 16 year old who does not know what Allah says. He has no idea what's in Surah Al-Baqarah, or in Surah Al-Jathiyah, or in Juz Amma. He does not know. No way. We can do that. It is possible. We can do it within 10 years or even less. But we have to care. We have to actually become part of this effort. And that is not one person's job. Every single member of this ummah, you and I are responsible to educate ourselves and educate our families. Educate our children. They have to learn what this book means. This, came, this book came so we can think about it. إِنَّا أَنزَلَّهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا لَعَلَّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ 
We give this in Arabic, we send down an Arabic Quran so you can think, you can understand. Allah keeps saying that to you and me. I gave you this Quran so you can understand, so you can understand, so you can understand. And we say, no, 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 you gave me this Quran so I can learn Tajweed and recite and listen to a CD in my car. That's it. That's the end of it. Tajweed is important. Recitation is important. But those are all secondary. As a matter of fact, you know why Tajweed is important? Tajweed is important so you recite the Quran clearly. And when you recite it clearly, it becomes easier to understand. Why is the Quran memorized? So you repeat yourself. And the more you repeat, the better you understand. Everything that has to do with our relationship with the Qur'an goes back to the fundamental, which is we have to understand this Qur'an. It goes back to understanding this Qur'an. As a matter of fact, when people are drunk, back in the day, our alcohol was not, or wine was not haram yet. And you know the big problem with wine? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارًا those of you who have iman, don't come near the prayer. Don't pray, don't come near the salah while you are drunk. Until when? Until you know what you're saying. Until you know what you're saying. One of the major problems with wine in the Quran is somebody will make salah and the problem will be what? They don't know what they're saying. Now, Alhamdulillah, we don't have the wine problem. Alhamdulillah, for the most part, we don't have the wine problem. But we have the other problem, don't we? We don't know what we're saying. We don't know what we're saying. That is an emergency. That is an emergency. We think about you know, physical emergencies. An earthquake is a physical emergency. A war is a physical emergency. But me not understanding the word of Allah when I recite it, that is a spiritual emergency. I have to care about this. And if I am 30, 35 years old, 25 years old, and I never got a chance to learn, I will make sure I don't deprive my children. I will make sure they don't reach my age and say, I wish I knew what the Qur'an meant. I will not let that happen to my kids. I will start learning today, even if I'm 80 years old. Even if I'm 90 years old. Because the month of Qur'an is coming. I, the messenger would recite the ayat onto the people. Now you tell me, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would recite the ayat onto the Quraysh, did the Quraysh understand the Quran? Did they understand the Quran? Yeah, they did. This is a very big deal. There are stories in the Quran where kuffar, non-Muslims, haters of Islam, they heard the ayat of Allah and they started crying. The kafir started crying. Today my problem is, I'm not a kafir alhamdulillah, and I'm listening to the word of Allah and nothing moves. Nothing moves, that's a tragedy. I, the Qur'an got more of a reaction from a kafir back then, than it gets from me today. That's a problem. That's an emergency. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ The second thing the messengers... This is his formula. You have to make the Qur'an common. The mother is teaching her son. She's teaching her daughter. The, the husband is teaching his wife. The wife is teaching the husband if she knows more. The, the family is becoming a family of the Book of Allah. You know? They're trying to find every opportunity they can to further their understanding of it. They're memorizing it, they're studying its tajweed, they're learning its meaning, they're studying its tafsir. Because this, is, this book is like food for them. Just like every few hours you need food, Allah makes you and me go back and make salah. And the longest part of salah is what? Is qiyam. And in qiyam, what do you recite? You recite Qur'an. How can I not have a direct relationship? And one of the points I have found very, very sad, my beloved brothers and sisters, I want to share it with you. A point I find very, very sad. We are Muslims. We have never understood the Quran. That's what I find. We are guilty. And I, we travel the globe and we look at Muslims in a Muslim country. And you say, brother, have you understood the Quran? He says, no, I recite it. What do you mean recite it? I read. 
I, I can read Surah Al-Fatiha, Al-Duha, Al-Teen, Al-Alaq, Al-Falaq. You can recite. How do you know the meaning? He says, no, meaning I don't know. <laughs> but I can recite because I need it for my salah. Well, what is your field, my brother? So he will tell you, I'm an accountant. So when you became an accountant, how many books did you read? He will tell you, oh, many books. So your accountancy will help you for how many years? I get a very good job with Ernest and Young. <laughs> so how much are you getting? I'm, I'm getting paid so much. Perhaps, you know, tens of thousands of ringgits, mashallah. And how long will that last for? He says, well, uh, they will retire me at 65. What's retirement age here in Malaysia? 58. Oh, it's come down. I said 65. So now the certificate is valued for less than that even. They've cut out seven years from it. So it will only help you for this many years. And you have read so many books in order for you to work up to the age of 58. And then your retirement package. Have you read one book to prepare you for the life after death? One. One book, main book. My beloved mothers, sisters, brothers, we are guilty. Wallahi, we are guilty. We need to understand. When we understand the pure message of the Quran, it automatically shines. It shines our ornament. And it removes the rust from our acts of worship. Because we will understand what Allah wants from us. That's the Quran. And this is why, you know, the hearts of the believers, they incline towards the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have someone explaining the Quran in simple words, no matter who it is, even the non-Muslims will listen. They will listen. You know, there is a hadith where there were the three leaders of Quraysh in Mecca who quietly used to go. During the daytime, they used to fight Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to tell everyone, don't listen to this Quran. Don't listen to this man. He is a magician. He is a madman. He is a womanizer. He wants power. He wants money. They threw so many accusations at him. But at night, they, separately, the one decided, let me, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to read Qur'ans audibly, slightly audibly near where he was, and they used to go around and s quietly. You know, that time the homes were not like this, where I'm talking so loudly the neighbor cannot hear me. <laughs> that time you say something and people can hear you. So they went, one is on this side, the other one that side, and it's dark, that time there were no street lights and so on, they're listening. When he completed his recitation, the three were walking home. Oh, they bumped into each other. I'm talking of leaders, Al-Akhnas ibn Shuray, the names are there, Abu Jahl. They, they were the leaders of Quraysh, the ones who were fighting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And what happened? They met on the road, they bumped into each other at night. Hey, what are you doing awake at this time of the night? He says, no, what are you doing awake at this time? Of the other one says, no, what are you doing awake at this time of the night? So he says, hey, look, you know what? Uh, I was, he said, no, 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 no excuse. Tell us what were you doing? And then the three, they admitted, no, you know, the one says, I went to listen to this uh, word to see what, he says, you know what? I went to do the same thing. The third one says, you know what? I did the same thing. So they said, look, we are the leaders. We can't do this. Imagine the sweetness of the Quran pulls the non-Muslims towards it. And sometimes the Muslims themselves are not pulled. Allahu Akbar. In our age. In our age today, Muslims themselves, they just say, no, this book is there to read. And just you must recite every morning as an ornament. Pick it up and read Surah Al-Fatiha and read Surah Al this and that. And just close it and put it away. We have not understood its meaning. We don't know its message. But ask them about Harry Potter. They will give you all five versions. And they will tell you, we hope there was a sixth one. Yes, it's happening. Quran, compare it to the other books. What are we going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?